And so, my dear brethren, I might go on. I might discuss with you what is happening on the internet and with the use of a computer that leads to degrading thoughts and actions. Suffice it to say, it is totally unbecoming you as one who holds the priesthood of God. You are his chosen servant. You have been ordained to something holy and wonderful. You cannot live in the world and partake of the ways of the world. You must be above all of that. Hi everyone, this is Ben Peterson, and welcome to the Hope in Christ podcast. Following the Come Follow Me curriculum of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we search the scriptures and words of God's prophets for relevant and powerful lessons that will increase our connection with God and our hope and faith in Christ. I'm so glad you're listening and hope you enjoy this week's highlights. Hi, this episode started with words from President Gordon B. Hinckley, speaking about the need to push back and not conform to the ways of the world. But before we talk a little bit more about that topic, I'd like to throw out just a couple of impressive thoughts about Samuel the prophet that we didn't get to mention last week. Really quickly, first, when Samuel was called as a prophet as a young boy, he answered with the words, Speak, for thy servant heareth. We should all answer this same way whenever the Lord speaks to us, whether that's by personal revelation, through the prophet, or even through the keys of our local priesthood leaders who represent him when they extend calls or invitations to us. Whenever the Lord's word comes to us by any of these means, our answer should always be an open ear to whatever the Lord is trying to teach and tell us. Secondly, the scripture says that Samuel didn't let any of God's words fall to the ground. That meant that Samuel did all that the Lord asked him to do. And in turn, the Lord did all that Samuel asked. He justified all Samuel's words. When we can become so aligned with the Lord's will that his will has truly become our own, God will give us whatever we ask for because he knows we'll only ask for his will in his timing. So with Samuel's call, Israel is once again all under the guidance of a prophet of God, unitedly. Now let's move into the main message of today's scripture highlight. I can remember years past an old commercial that said, When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, they want to see how tough. When they want to see how tough, you end up in a roadside ditch. Don't end up in a roadside ditch. Switch from cable. So even though that commercial was aired thousands of years after Old Testament times, the principle it communicates is a lesson that the Israelites are about to experience in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Leading up to that, in chapters 4 through 7, Israel has several battles with the Philistines, and they lose. Some of the Israelites thought that if they took the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God's presence among the Israelites, and brought it to the battlefront, they could win a war. But bringing the Ark just made the Philistines all the more determined to win, and they did. Eli the priest's two unfaithful sons were killed, along with tens of thousands of the Israelites, and the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant. There's a great story in chapter 5 about how God shows his power over the false gods of the Philistines. You might want to check that one out. But as long as the wicked possessed the ark, God caused the Philistines to suffer boils all over their bodies. And he even caused many of their wicked to be slain. After passing the ark from city to city like a hot potato trying to avoid the punishments from Israel's God, the Philistines decided to send it back to the Israelites. Once the Israelites had the Ark of the Covenant again, they took it to a city called kirjath Jerim, which means City of Woods, and they kept the Ark there for 20 years. In chapter 7, verse 3, Samuel urged Israel to return to the Lord with all your hearts. He said that if they do this, it means they would put away the strange things that distracted them and took their focus and hearts away from Almighty God. And not just that but they would also prepare their hearts to serve God only. And if they would do this, God would protect them and deliver them from the danger and bondage of their enemies. 
I really like to read what happens next in chapter 7 when the Israelites do repent. To me, that story is evidence of how willing God is to keep His promises and to help us fight our battles, even and perhaps especially when we're just starting down the road to repentance. I recommend chapter 7 to you, and as you study it, watch how the truly repentant Israelites responded to the oncoming threat of the Philistines. You might also ask yourself, how do I see God's power in my life as I truly turn to Him with all my heart and give up the distractions in my life? Chapter 7 really is a most remarkable story. Samuel judged righteously in Israel for many years, but was now getting old. He made his sons judges over Israel, but the people soon realized that his sons were easily bought and didn't judge righteously like their father. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and made a request, one that would bring lasting negative consequences to Israel for generations. The elders said to Samuel, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations." They want a king like all the nations. Do you see the big problems with their request? What might be wrong with them asking for a king? It broke Samuel's heart to hear this. In verse 7, the Lord comforted Samuel, saying, In essence, don't worry, Samuel. They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me as their king. And when Samuel took the request to the Lord, the Lord did what he will always do for us every time. He told Samuel, to give the people what they wanted. But because he knew this was a bad decision, Jehovah encouraged Samuel to warn them. One of the clear problems with their desire for a king was that it sought to replace the Lord as their protector and as the one who would fight their battles. And they wanted to rely on the knowledge and strength of a man instead. Here's a question to discuss with others. How can we more intentionally show the Lord that we want Him to be our king? The other big problem with their desire was that they wanted to do things the same way as the rest of society. They wanted to fit in with the world and look the same as everyone else. Can you think of ways we seem to care about being like the world? Of course, it can feel comfortable to fit in and follow the crowd. Trends seem to be all the rage right now. The irony in the fact that so many are trying so hard to give up faith in God in a quest to be what they call authentically themselves is that they truthfully give up the one thing that does set them apart from the rest of the world, their faith in God. As we talked about in the episode on Judges Part 5, when we talked about the man in the elevator, we are each going to have to learn to turn the right way in our lives even when everyone else is telling us to turn around and face the wrong direction. In our hearts, we will know that what they're doing isn't right, but we have to have the courage to stand fast and look in the right direction regardless of the fact that so many around us might be doing the exact opposite. God's warnings about what a mess a king would mean for Israel were very clear. Nevertheless, the scripture says, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, nay, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations. And as we mentioned before, the Lord was willing to give them what they asked for, even though he knew it could never give them the greatest happiness. Why would he grant them the desire of their hearts? I think the words to this hymn sum it up really well. Know this, that every soul is free to choose his life and what he'll be. For this eternal truth is given that God will force no man to heaven. He'll call, persuade, direct aright, and bless with wisdom, love, and light. In nameless ways be good and kind, but never force the human mind. Here's a question for discussion. Knowing that God will in the end let you have what you choose, what do you really want? Is there something in your life that reflects the world more than it does the true desire of your heart. If there is, you might consider making a change. I hope you enjoyed today's scripture highlight. Here's a question to prepare for tomorrow. If you're in a really tough situation, is it ever justifiable to bend a commandment just a little? I hope you would join us again for tomorrow's discussion. I'm so glad you're choosing to study the scriptures and to listen to this podcast. 
Enjoy your scripture study and remember there is always hope in Christ.